Well, good morning from suburban Jessup, Indiana. Uh, today we're going to make, I'm going to show you how to forge a key ring wall rack. Uh, I first saw this at the city coal yard in Brazil, Indiana years ago. Uh, they had one in the way of scale office right next to the door. But it was kind of like a pot rack. It came out and then it come in a half circle and then it fastened to the wall on both ends. And I don't know, it had probably seven, eight, maybe ten hooks. Uh, it was made out of a little smaller stock. But I thought it was real neat. Uh, so that's where I got this from years ago. Uh, I don't know who made that one. And the city coal yard's been gone for, for, for quite a few years now. So there's nobody I can ask uh, to find out who made it. But uh, anyway, this is what we're going to make. Uh, and just for those of you that notice these things, you'll notice in the video I've got a different shirt on and a different pair of beds because I screwed up the intro and the exit this morning, so I, got to, I had to reshoot them. So this is the one we actually made, and I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, be sure to like it and share it with your friends. Okay? You know it's going to be a good day in suburban Jessup when you go to get your bibbies and your, and your t-shirt out of the dryer. The first thing you find is you find your readers. Uh, so needless to say, those are scrapped now. So, but luckily we got a backup pair, but that's how my day started today. And we're going to go from there. So anyway, we're going to start with the layout. We got a piece of inch and a half by eighth inch stock. Uh, out of scrap pile. It's got rust on it. got a bend in it. That's no big deal. We can take the bend out. We don't need to get real worried about it. We just want it to lay flat on the table for the layout. That'll get us. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here, we want to lay out. Let's 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 talk about how we come up with our with, with our distances. I like to put it's just a matter of preference. I like to put an inch and a half between each one of my hooks. So we got five hooks that gives us four spaces. Okay, each space is an inch and a half. So an inch and a half times four is six. Okay. So we got six inches there. Then I like to put an inch between the last hook on each side and the start of split work. So that's two inches added to the six is eight. The split work takes two inches on each end. So that's four more inches. That makes us 12. So we want to mark off 12 inches. So we're going to go right here. I'm going to put my cheaters on that I was just talking about. Make sure I'm there. I'm there. Let's go ahead and square that up. So that's the piece we're going to use right there. Before we cut it off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark, make our markings. So I'm going to come down here, make sure that's down at the end, fairly close. Then I'm going to come two inches here, two inches here. Now I want to go an inch here. And I'm going to go an inch here. And I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to go my inch and a half. My inch and a half. My inch and a half, which gives me my inch and a half. Okay. So let's go ahead. Just for the sake of layout. And let's mark every one of those. So now we're going to come down here, we're going to mark three quarter here, I guess it helps if we grab the right pencil then, three quarter here, right there, we're going to mark three quarter here, so 
somehow I ended up with two marks there. It's not going not to cut it. You want one mark. Just like that. Now we're going to... On the two inch parts, we're going to make a complete line. Just like that. And now here, we're just going to mark our centers. Just like that. And that gives us your layout. Now, I've got two center punches here. I've got a round center punch. If you can see that, it's got a round end on it, round point. And then I've got a square center punch. The reason I've got two of them is because we're going to punch a couple of these uh, with a punch and fire, and then we're going to drill uh, three of them. Just be a little quicker. Uh, when I'm demonstrating in the public, I punch them. Okay. Uh, normally in the shop, if I'm doing production work, I drill them. That's that's just the way it is. That's quicker and, and uh, it's more profitable that way. So what we want to do, the ones we're going, the ones we're going to put in the fire, we're going to use the square center punch. And the reason we're going to use a square because in the fire. When you bring it out, if you've got nice crisp square edges on your center punch mark, you can see it better when you bring it out. So we're going to do our middle one in the fire. Make sure it's where we want it. And come back and hit it again. We're going to do the one to the left. Guess it'd be the right, really. We're going to do the one, one to the right. Make sure it's where we want. We're going to do the other three. Let's get our cheaters back on. For some reason, I can't see that one. Bring it up. Make sure it's where it's at, where we want it, and we're going to do it again. Okay, so we've got our center punch marks for our five holes. Now one side of this I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it on the band side. The other side I'm going to split it in the, uh, on the anvil. So one side I want to make a cold chisel mark on it so that I've got something to follow when I bring it out of fire. Now I forged this cold chisel from a piece of Allen wrench. I've had real good luck with Allen wrenches making chisels for cold work. So I'm going to put that on the line there. Just walk that down that line. So I've got something to fall. Want it to be a nice, good line so I can follow it once I bring it out of fire. So if you can see that. Got a cold chisel mark now on that line. Okay, as we get ready to, to drill the holes for these rivets and these three holes here, uh, let me talk to you about the rivets. The rivets, I get them from Tractor Supply. They're 15 64th, I believe, is what they are. Uh, but uh, they're 5 8 from the shoulder to the head. Now, 
we're using eighth inch material uh, and we're using uh, the number 16 horseshoe now. So by the time we flatten that head, let's just make the math easy. We're just going to call it an eighth of an inch. So we've got an eighth of an inch here and an eighth of an inch here. That gives us two eighths or a quarter. Let's just leave it at two eighths. Okay. So the rivet itself is just shy of a quarter inch. So we're just going to take it to quarter inch, uh, the diameter is uh, just shy of a quarter inch, so just for the math we're going to take it to quarter inch. So for the rivet head we want one and a half times the diameter of the rivet. So if it's a quarter inch that's two eighths, so let's just add the other eighth for the other half, so that's three eighths. So we got three eighths here, and we got two eighths between the thickness of the stock and here, that's five eighths. And it just so happens when you buy those they're five eighths inches. That's handy. Now I've decided while I was drilling that I was thinking about that. And I'm not going to cut this off yet because that makes me an awful handy handle and that way I don't have to uh, use the tongs uh, for when I split this and when I punch these two. That way I got a handle. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave this uh, on the handle. We're not going to separate. We're not going to take the bandsaw and cut it off yet. So let's get over here and let's, let's get the forge fired up and let's get this part of it down. So here's the punch we're going to use to punch the, the holes for the rivets. Okay. If you look at that, it's got a little bit of a taper to it because this is fairly thin stock. So I don't have to worry about the hole being, being too large because it's 8 thin inch stock. But uh, basically it's just a, just a round punch. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger, not much bigger, than our rivet. And this is the punch that I made to do these with. That design came out of Mark Asper's, I believe it was his first book, uh, is what that design came out of. It's got a place to index with. And on these you really don't need to index because uh, it's round. Uh, but like I said, that's uh, all mine, most all mine have that, uh, have that index mark. Okay, so we've heated that to a good orange heat. We're going to find our sugar punch mark and we're going to drive down until we felt it hit the bottom of the anvil. Then we're going to flip it over. We're going to come over here over the hardy hole where that dark spot is. And there's our there's our punched hole. That's all there is to it. Now we're going to take that and flatten that down a little bit. Now we're going to heat it up and we're going to do the other one. Okay, now we're going to do this next one. We're going to start it the same way. We're going to come up here. We're going to find our center punch mark right there. So the bottom's out. On the end. Like that. We're going to flip it over. Now this time we're going to use a bolster block. Put that in that dark spot. One more time. There it is. Now if you notice, by using that bolster block, we didn't get near the, deform, the deformity that we did, the damage that we did uh, on the first hole using the Pritchell hole because the bolster block, the hole was a lot smaller and we got a real nice hole with that. So there's our five holes. Like I said, we drilled, we drilled three and we punched two and then probably in all honesty, you could probably just about punch them just as quick as you can drill them. So now we're going to put it back in the fire, and we're going to uh, we're going to split this where we where made that cold chisel mark. We're going to split that, and then we're going to cut this loose down here, and we're going to split that.
before I fire that forge back up to have a little discussion about the bolster block. I've got several of these. Got this one with a flat, flat plate. And then I've got this one, it's a round piece with different size holes in it. Uh, I kind of like this plate better, uh, but this is real, real handy. Uh, I just throw it there on the corner of the forge and I've got it when I need it. So uh, all it is is just different size holes drilled uh, so that you don't uh, have that dip in a piece when you punch a hole. Okay, as we bring this out, we're going to come up here. We're going to find our hot cut mark, or cold cut mark. We're going to get it set in there. We're going to start by walking the chisel on that hot cut mark. I'm going to follow it again. This anvil's cold, so it's sucking the heat out of that pretty quick. So we're going to heat it back up again. Okay, so now, since I've got my slit started and well established, I'm just going to walk that chisel down that groove and not pick it up like I did before. right there. Now I'm going to take that, I'm going to heat that back up and I'm going to drive that down onto a hot cut to clean up that rag down here in the crotch, okay? up the crotch of that okay we've got the the sharp pieces from the uh, from the chisel removed and it's turned out pretty nice okay so next we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut the other end on the bandsaw uh, cut it off and cut the other end on the bandsaw so that's what we're going to do next and I'm not going to I'm not going to film that so let's take a look at this this is the end this is the end that we've uh, that we slit, and if you notice, we've got a real nice transition. I don't know if you can see it there, but you got a real nice transition here from your split up here. Now this this is the end we just bandsaw cut. We don't have a real nice transition. So what I try to do after I get done cutting it is I heat it up and I take a chisel and I just make a divot there. Uh, so we've got the nice same nice transition that we've got there. We're going to do that right there. Okay? Now if you look, we've got a better transition now if you can see it. Just like we have here, we have that right there. Now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the scroll work. We're going to take this, we're going to bend one out of the way, it's going to be called a convenience bend. We're going to bend this out of the way and we're going to taper this. Okay, and I'm going to taper till 
I think it looks like a nice taper and a good length. And then we're going to mark that length on the anvil. And then we're going to make the other three tapers match that taper. Uh, we'll give you a dimension uh, sometime during that process. But normally I just eyeball it and say, yeah, I think that's a good length. Uh, I, I don't think I ever actually measured that out. But this is two inches from here to there. And by the time I taper that out, that usually gives me a good length for my scrolls. So like I said, we're going to take one side of that and we're going to make a convenience bend and we're going to get it out of the way. And we're going to take the other end and we're going to, the other side and we're going to start tapering. If you noticed here, when we turn that up on end, it wants to pucker. It wants to pucker right here. So as we forge that, we want to forge it down this way a little bit. Two or three, four blows, maybe a few more, and then we want to turn it this way and we want to take that pucker back out of it. If you try to taper it all at one shot, it's going to bend over and it's going to end up round on you. So you want to leave it flat, and you only want to do about three or four there, three or four there. That's all you want to do. Start on again. One is there. That direction, that plane. That plane. That plane. Try to keep it flat as we go. We should have our length that we want. A nice smooth even tape. 